Okay. Sometimes when we add quantities in parallel, it's going to be more convenient to work with inverse numbers, particularly the inverse of impedance admittance. So um, but that's what we're going to talk about next is uh, a technique for calculating admittances. So the inverse of complex impedance is called admittance. Uh, it's given the symbol Y. It's a vector quantity. It's just 1 over Z. So admittance, the complex quantity, is 1 over Z. It's measured in a unit called Siemens, uh, also alternatively Mohs, right? Uh, the complex value can be decomposed into its real and imaginary parts. Um, y is, in its real and imaginary format, is G plus, plus J B. So it's a complex number, right? It's a rectangular form. So we write it in rectangular form. We see that G here is called conductance. Um, it's measured in ohms, or sorry, mohs. And uh, B is susceptance, and it's measured in um, Mohs. Note that due to um, the complex nature of Z, remember Z is uh, R plus JX, um, due to the complex nature of Z, we cannot say that G equals 1 over R and we cannot say that B equals 1 over X. So what we're saying there is that the conductance is not the inverse of resistance. Remember that term is actually called uh, conductivity. Um, susceptance B is not the inverse of um, reactance. It's more complicated than that. You actually have to do uh, you actually have to divide 1 by the complex number uh, z and then decompose it into its rectangular and real parts. The primary use of this technique is when we start adding parallel devices um, later in the course. So let's do a quick example of it. We'll finish today's lecture with an example regarding admittance calculations. We have a transmission line. It's got a resistance of 1 ohm and a total reactance of 10 ohms. What are the, what are the uh, conductance of susceptance of the transmission line? So you'll notice that reactance was specified in this case as 10 ohms. That's really common in the power system. You know that system frequency is 60 hertz. So a lot of times, instead of devices being specced in terms of inductance and capacitance, they just go ahead and tell you how much reactance they have. So how do we begin to answer this? Uh, the impedance of the T line is just going to be uh, 1 plus J10. Right. They said 10 ohms. Oh, we assume that's a positive 10, 10 ohms. Note that this reactance was uh, uh, specified in ohms already. Right? We don't have to do any conversions uh, to get that. Um, I will say the practice of specifying reactance in ohms is less common in uh, other uh, branches of ECET where frequency of the AC signal may vary, such as biomedical or acoustic engineering or something. That. Uh, um, so anyway. Uh, we converted this over to reactance by multiplying it by J. We can then calculate admittance just by saying 1 over, so Y, admittance, which is the inverse of the impedance, is just 1 over the vector quantity Z. That's equal to 1 over 1 plus J10. Uh, if you don't know the rules for complex division, I encourage you to uh, refresh yourself on those. Uh, but if you do that math, it's 0 0.01 minus J.1. Uh, this is, since we were in ohms before, this is an inverse quantity. It's now measured in moles. Uh, the conductance is therefore 0 0.01 mo, and the susceptance is 0 0.1 mo. G equals 0 0.01, and B equals 0 0.1, both measured in moles.